Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to talk about um, what we're going to answer a question, and that is, can you stop taking thyroid medication once you start? And this is obviously an important topic for people taking thyroid medication because uh, the general rule is once you start taking it, the doctors will want you to be on it essentially forever. And so um, that there's a lot of patients who may not have to have to do that and so I want to talk about some of the patients that may be able to get off of it soon um, or people that may need it only temporarily. So before we jump in we'll give you an overview of what we're going to be talking about um, with some bullet points. So first of all people start taking thyroid medication because of blood tests but these blood tests are not 100% accurate. We'll talk about that in a minute. Some people who start taking thyroid medication may be able to eventually wean themselves off. Not everybody but some. Um, unfortunately doctors aren't likely to make this suggestion though uh, unless you bring it up. So this is why this is important to you. Some individuals may require thyroid medication for the rest of their lives, but that's not everybody. And if you decide to try and get off your thyroid medication, you must do it slowly and controlled. And I would add in there that you should be doing it with the help of your doctor as well. So we'll talk about that at the very end. Uh, so first of all, just a little brief um, introduction. So why people start taking thyroid medication. This is important because it helps you kind of understand um, how to get off of it. So essentially, the only reason to give someone thyroid medication um, is if their thyroid is not producing enough thyroid hormone on its own. So in that way, what your doctor is trying to do is, uh, let's say that you know a normal person produces 100% of thyroid hormone. Let's say if you're a little bit damaged, you're only producing 70%. So the idea is to use that thyroid medication to supplement the, the difference between 70 and 100, which in this case would be 30. So this is just a hypothetical example. Now, the, pro the question really becomes, if you only are able to produce 70% of whatever is normal, is there ever going to be a time in your life when you'll be able to get back up to 100%? Because if that's the case, then you won't have to take thyroid hormone ever again, right? Because if you are fixed whatever problem was causing that reduction to begin with, then you won't need, there will be no need for you to supplement with extra thyroid hormone. So this is sort of the logic that you need to understand. Now the problem is, the way doctors determine if you need thyroid medication has to do with blood tests, predominantly the TSH test, but that's not necessarily an accurate measurement of thyroid status. So you can read some of the studies that I've linked here if you'd like to, but just, you know, for, uh, in a general sense, just understand that it's not the best way to actually test for your thyroid. Furthermore, there are plenty of times when that TSH um, can be high or outside of the normal range, but still be a normal variant of of, of your body or whatever's happening inside your body. So just because it's abnormal once or twice doesn't, it is not a guaranteed indication that you have to be on thyroid medication. Another thing is that your thyroid lab tests only tell you what's happening with your thyroid right here and right now, you know, uh, when you test it. Um, so whenever you get your blood test, that's what it's telling you is happening in your thyroid right now. The reason that's important is because you have no idea what's going to happen in three months, six months, one year, five years, ten years, right? But if you start on medication now, it affects your, your blood test for as long as you're on the medication. So you need to be thinking right here, right now, but also in the future. So can you stop taking it? The answer briefly is maybe. We're going to talk about the three groups of thyroid patients who uh, that exist. I'm just you know, in, in general, in a general broad uh, sense, and where where you fit into the, these three groups. Because if you're in the group, for instance, that can't get off thyroid medication, well, then you have your answer. But there are some other groups, two and three, where you might be able to get off or um, at least reduce your dose of thyroid medication. So let's talk about these three groups. Um, number one would be those thyroid patients who just have to be on thyroid medication for the rest of their lives. There are some of you who are going to fit this category. And the unfortunate truth is many of you in this position don't even know you're in this position. And I don't blame you for that. I think it's just a, a failure of the medical system. Um, but let's talk about that because I've had plenty of people who say, I want to get off my medicine and they, they don't have a thyroid anymore because it's been removed. Well, if you're fit into that category, there's no way you can ever get off your medication. You have to have thyroid hormone to survive. Um, otherwise, you'll go into a mixed edema coma or death. And so you, if you're in that position, you just have to take it no matter what. It doesn't matter. It's too late. So we'll talk about those people that have to have it. If you fit any of these categories. So number one, we talked about just briefly, those who don't have a thyroid. Now that could be because it's been removed, um, because you've had a thyroidectomy, or because you were simply born without it. But if you do not have a thyroid, if it's been 100% completely removed, you have to take thyroid medication for the rest of your life, no matter what. There's no way that, there's no information that we have currently, um, which allows us to regenerate your thyroid gland. That technology just doesn't exist right now. Maybe in the future, but we don't have it right now. This doesn't apply, though, if you have only have had half of your thyroid removed or a portion, which isn't 100%.
So there's a small percentage of people who, if they get a part of their thyroid removed, the other part of the thyroid gland can kind of overproduce thyroid hormone and they don't necessarily need to have it a 100%. But if, the, but if your whole gland has been removed, then you will need it. That's group number one. Group number two, those who have had their thyroid 100% destroyed with radioactive iodine ablation therapy. So this is uh, commonly used for Graves' disease and, and sometimes for thyroid cancer and so on. But if you've had this procedure, and the emphasis is on 100%, because a lot of times doctors will try to kill your thyroid 100%, but they only end up killing 50% or 40% or 70%, some number, right? So if it's 100%, though, you will require, you, you will need to be on thyroid medication for the rest of your life, because even though the gland is inside your body, technically, it's non-functional. It's completely atrophied. It doesn't work. Um, so that's group number two. Group number three would be those people who have end-stage Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which has resulted in complete thyroid atrophy. Okay, so this is what happens to patients, and a lot of patients, believe it or not, fit into this category whether they realize it or not, because remember, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease, and it results in the destruction of your gland. So if you had this inflammation and this autoimmune disease in your body for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you know, something like that, there's a very good chance that even though your thyroid gland is technically inside of your body still, it's atrophied, it's shrunk, and it's completely damaged from that trauma. So if that's the case, it's probably not going to be working anymore. And again, you'll have to be on thyroid medication for the rest of your life. But that's only people who are in the end stage. Now, we're going to talk about number two and number three, but you can imagine if you're in early stage, well, you got a pitutary chance. And then, of course, those who don't have a pituitary gland um, because it's been destroyed or damaged or they've had a tumor um, or same thing with hypothalamic damage. So anything in the brain which interferes with your hypothalamus or pituitary um, will impact your ability to your thyroid gland to work. So technically, even though the gland is capable of producing thyroid hormone in these people, if there's no signal coming from the brain telling it to produce, there's not much you can do. So you'll have to be on it. But that one's pretty, that one's pretty rare. These top three are quite common. And the unfortunate truth is for these, um, the rest of this information just isn't going to apply to you because you have to be on medication. Um, okay. So number two, we're going to be talking about those who were placed on thyroid medication inappropriately. And believe it or not, there is a huge number of people that fit into this category. I was reading a study the other day that said something like um, they were looking in a nursing home, I believe, and they said that they were able to successfully wean off about half of the people that were on thyroid medication later in their life without any consequences. So that means that that half, those, those people that were in this study, um, and the study's linked in, in this, um, this article if you want to go to it, but it means about half of those people probably didn't need to be on it forever, um, or may, they might have been put on it inappropriately, or they were put on it temporarily and just kept on it forever. And I've seen many patients um, in, my, in my treating who have been on thyroid medication for 20, 30 years, and they don't even remember or know why they started it to begin with. But what happens is once you start taking it, doctors are just conditioned to continue prescribing it. So you kind of have to figure out, kind of go back in and figure out why did you start it to begin with. But there are some people who get placed on it inappropriately because of the blood test that I was talking about before. So I've had a number of people um, who I know personally who are placed on it, like I said, um, because let's say they have one high TSH. Let's say that you go to the doctor, you get a random test done, and your TSH comes back 15. You're not symptomatic, you're feeling completely fine, but your TSH is 15. So your doctor immediately thinks you're hypothyroid, starts you on medicine. And then if they're not careful, you might just stay on that medicine indefinitely because you, if you don't know any better, you'll just be like, okay, well, my doctor knows best, so I just need to take it. But if you're not having symptoms and your TSH is abnormal just one time, don't start the medication for, you know, in the, in this scenario. The reason for that is about, you know, anywhere from up to 5% or so, it could be even more of all lab tests at any given time are inaccurate. And so that means about, that's about a one in 20 chance that any lab test that you're ordering is inaccurate. And if you order 20 labs that come up, you know, which is routine tests, that means there's a the chance that a high chance that one of those is abnormal or one of those is not accurate. So even if it's an abnormal result, it may not be um, an accurate abnormal result. So keep that in mind. There are a number of you who have been started inappropriately. And you know if you kind of fit into this category because you were placed on thyroid medication a long time ago probably. You probably at that time did not have any symptoms. And you probably after starting the medicine didn't notice any difference. So that, that's sort of the, the scenario that I see quite a bit. Then we have the third group of people are those who need thyroid medication but only temporarily. Now the problem with these people is that they, they, they do need it. They have a need for it because, like I said, their thyroid can't produce enough. But the problem is once they get placed on it, they're just continued on it indefinitely, even though after some period of time, which could be you know, months or years even, um, even though their thyroid could be working on its own, they are just continued on the thyroid medication indefinitely. 
So people who fit into this category include a lot of people that I mentioned before who have early to mid-stage Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So remember, just because you have it doesn't mean that it's going to ultimately destroy your thyroid gland completely. It could be reversed, especially if you are diligent and you use some of the therapies that I've talked about on my blog before. It doesn't guarantee that you'll be able to heal yourself, but it does. Um, there's a much higher chance that you'll be able to at least reduce the dose that you're taking, if not get off of it completely. Um, the next one would be hypothyroidism caused from dieting or obesity. So if you're somebody who just was unlucky and let's say, I'll give you an example of something that I've seen quite a bit. So we have somebody who does the HCG diet, or it could be any diet, it could even be the ketogenic diet, um, just any sort of diet, and they lose a bunch of weight, they feel kind of, you know, run down or sluggish, so they go to their doctor, the doctor tests their labs, and what do they see? They see that their thyroid is not functioning very well. Well, we know, well, hopefully you know, that certain diets do cause damage to the thyroid gland, but that damage is only temporary, or temporary. But if you were just unlucky, and you went to your doctor and he tested it and it showed that you had you know, uh, thyroid issues. He might put you on thyroid medication thinking that you had hypothyroidism before you dieted. But the interesting thing is that a lot of the thyroid issues that come from dieting tend to resolve themselves over time. Now, yes, it can take six months or one year or two years or three years, but they still are getting better on their own. But if you started, like I said, if you were just unlucky and you went in there, you started that medicine, you're going to be kept on it indefinitely, most likely. That's another big category. I, I would say that's probably the most common of these, of these of these categories that we're going to be talking about are people and, and groups. Another one would be hypothyroidism from some causes of inflammation, especially thyroiditis. So Hashimoto is just one type of thyroiditis, but there's plenty others. These are, I, this is a big topic in and of its own. So if you, if you feel like you have this, then I would encourage you to read more on, over here. Um, there are some people that have postpartum thyroiditis as well who require thyroid medication, but not temporary. For instance, only 20% of people with postpartum thyroiditis will go on to develop permanent hypothyroidism, but that's not everybody. So that's, you know, an 80% chance that even if you need it temporarily, you won't have to use it long term. And then, of course, hypothyroidism from nutrient deficiencies, such as iodine deficiency. That's a reversible cause of hypothyroidism. And then hypothyroidism caused by extreme, extreme but usually temporary stress. So same sort of concept here, right? It's some sort of stimulus that impacts the thyroid, but it's something that can be resolved on its own. So if you have any of these sort of categories, then there's a chance that you may be able to at least reduce your dose in the future. But the question is, how do you do that? So I'm going to talk, um, talk about that a little bit right now. So the best thing that you can do in the first place that you should start is with your doctor. You need to be doing this with somebody who can help you. And the reason is, is fairly simple. What, let me just explain the physiology of what happens and then it'll become clear why you need a doctor. So once you start taking thyroid medication, your body, that medication sends signals to your brain that suppresses its own ability to produce thyroid gland. So, you're, so as you take more thyroid medication, your body becomes dependent upon that source of medication because it's, the, it's not atrophied, but it's unable, your thyroid is unable to produce its own thyroid hormone. So it's the same kind of thing that happens with um, testosterone, right? So everyone's worried that when you take testosterone that you're, you know, in a man anyway, your testicles won't be able to produce it anymore. So the same thing happens with your thyroid. It also happens with um, cortisol and it also happens with estrogen and progesterone if you take birth control pills or whatever. This, just, this is just a normal physiologic uh, thing that occurs if you're taking hormone by mouth or if you're taking it and your body's not producing it naturally. So what happens is as you reduce your dose, you have to give your body time to get back to, to being used to producing its own thyroid hormone. And that takes a while. Okay. So it's not unusual that even though you may not need thyroid medication, you're going to feel temporarily worse as you reduce yourself off of your medicine. And as your body kicks in and is able to produce its own thyroid hormone, and that can take a good two to three months. So it's important for you to understand this because if you, if you do this, you might think to yourself as you get off of your thyroid medication and you start feeling worse, you think, wow, I, okay, I guess I do need thyroid medication, but that's not necessarily true for the reasons I just said. Give your body a little bit of time to allow itself to produce more thyroid hormone on its own. And this is why you need to do it with your doctor so you can determine whether you're able to produce it or you're not because there's no guarantee that you can. But if you feel like you reach the categories or you're, you fall into the categories I've talked about before, then you might be able to do it. And the best way to do that is by taking whatever dose you're on. So let's just use a hypothetical dose of 100 micrograms per day of level thyroxine. So if you're taking that, what you would want to do is you want to reduce your dose by about 25 micrograms, sometimes even less, but let's just say 25 is an average. Um, and you want to do that every one to two weeks and just reduce your dose from 20, from 100 to 75. And then after a couple of weeks down to 50, then after a couple of weeks down to 
to 25 and so on. And that allows your body to produce whatever it can naturally as you reduce and wean yourself off of the existing dose. Because what's going to happen is if you just eliminate your dose completely, if you go from 100 to zero, your body is going to, it's going to freak out because it can't produce it what its own quite yet. And it's going to take you a couple months to kick in. And then you've just lost the only source that you, of thyroid hormone for your body. So just understand this, um, this dynamic so that you know what to expect if you decide to try and wean yourself off. And like I said, as you do this, your expectations, I'd recommend if you, if you plan on doing this, read this article because I have a lot of information here. Um, it'll go into more detail. This is more just a, you know, an overview of what, what to expect. But you might, um, you, might, you might feel temporarily hypothyroid as you do this. And that doesn't mean that you have to be on your medicine, but just it's a product of the uh, physiologic changes that I mentioned before. So the bottom line is, some people will, who are, who are listening to this, some people will be able to reduce their medication or completely get off of it. But there's no way for me to, you know, tell you right now based off of, you know, your, your a short brief history, whether or not what group you fall into and whether or not that's possible for you. I would encourage you to read through this article, though. Um, check the references, which are down here. Um, because there probably are some of you that will be able to get off of this. If I had to guess percentages, I would say maybe somewhere between 5 and 15%, uh, maybe up to 20 max, kind of depends on who's listening now, um, of people that might be able to reduce or get off their medicine. But um, hopefully this was helpful. If you guys have any questions at all, um, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to help guide you um, a little bit. But um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.